Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. I'm back here with another video about a different fruit that I don't talk about often, but I should because it's an amazing fruit, especially for people that have a smaller yards. This is called Sapodilla, also known as Nisparo. And there you see some on the tree. Uh, and this tree particularly behind me is loaded. There's several different varieties of this particular uh, fruit. Uh, and it's also called Chico, it's called uh, Nisparo, uh, but it's Sapodilla is what is the most common name and uh, they go really really tall if you let them but uh, you can keep them short as well the thing is a lot of people either don't know what they are and even if they know what they are they don't ripen at the same time so then you're not gonna have one big flush at the same time and i was at alex uh, and he was talking about the salus wood kneesboro which is kind of a dwarf kneesboro and he was talking a little about that so i'm going to play that clip for you but uh, i have several of these trees but this is my neighbor's tree that's really well grown. This is an Alano Sapodilla. And uh, so here's what they look like. And they literally taste like brown sugar. So he has Alano Sapodilla. And then he has, uh, I think this is a Molex uh, Sapodilla. And this is, a, uh, this is more of a shorter one as well. And I have one of those. Great fruits for the front of a house. If you have a small yard, uh, it's a really good fruit to grow. And they don't take a lot of water. And Alex is going to fill you up a lot more on, on, on what these type of fruits are and what they do. So check out that clip now. Here we are at Tropical Acres Farms. This is Alex. And today we're going to be talking about a fruit that's in season now, Sapodilla. So hello, Alex. How you doing? Good. Good. Everyone's loving uh, the farm and these videos and uh, we love coming here. So I was asking you what trees are, are, are in season now, what fruits in season. And you should already show me some of your Sapodilla that has fruit on it but they're not just ready yet. How long does it take before they're ready? So sapodillas, in terms of the amount of time it takes from the time the fruit has set till you've got a ripe, mature one, can be anywhere from six to eight months, um, sometimes even a little longer than that, depending on the variety, as well as the weather conditions from the point in time that the, the fruit have set. So the fruit that have to go through the winter period while they're developing take a little longer to develop because they're experiencing cooler temperatures at night compared to something that let's say flowers in the uh, end of winter or the spring and the fruit are developing in the summer, those fruit develop more rapidly because of the, the higher temperatures. So um, that's the time range you're looking at from the point in time that you actually see the little fruits. So so about six months or so? Or more, I would say more on average than okay. six months. But I would some, say trees, to eight. some trees are quicker, right? Like uh, this Yeah, some here. trees, so like uh, smaller, uh, fruit in general um, with sapodilla will uh, will mature faster. They don't take as long to develop. So yes, now, I know somebody in my block that has a sapodilla tree. I don't know what variety, it is, but it is huge. I mean, 30 feet or tall. It's crazy tall. So yeah, they can get very large. So sapodilla trees uh, have a reputation for growing slowly when they're young. But most sapodilla varieties will turn into vigorous, aggressive trees with time. And so there's sapodilla trees down in Central America that are over 100 feet tall. Um, they can get really, really big. Uh, here in Florida, I don't remember ever seeing one that big, but we've got plenty down here that are probably uh, you know, 40, 50 feet tall and more. Uh, we have a couple on this property, some old ones that are very, very tall. Um, you know, and. Uh, we get hurricanes here periodically that will prune those big sapodilla trees. Sapodillas actually have very weak branches, relatively speaking, compared to some other fruit trees. So it's very easy for them to have storm damage and that kind of keeps their height in check in Florida. But um, they can get pretty large. Now, uh, tell us about this uh, variety you have here that so, seems to be loaded with fruit. Yeah, this one behind me here is called Silas Wood, um, named after a man that was a member of the Rare Fruit International, Rare Fruit Council International in Miami. Um, his last name is Wood without an S, but I often see this in the nursery trade called Silas Woods, and that's uh, inaccurate. The, the name is actually Silas Wood. Anyway, he selected this sapodilla. I'm not sure exactly when, but it was definitely uh, a number of decades ago. I'm not sure if he's still alive or not, uh, but. Um, it's a little unique in that it is a dwarfish sapodilla. So I talked about how sapodillas can get very large with time. But this variety is one of only a couple that tends to stay small without much pruning. 
so it's not very difficult to keep a Silas wood sapodilla at a manageable size uh, compared to most other varieties. Uh, Maycock is the other kind of dwarfish sapodilla, if you will. Um, so, uh, but this is this is definitely a, a relatively small tree on its own. Uh, you know, Paul, that that Alana that we were looking at earlier was planted uh, the same day as this tree. You can see it's a more aggressive uh, grower than this, and so are some of the other sapodilla trees that we have that are already taller than this one. The cool thing about Silas wood, besides besides the relatively small size of the tree, is it's a very precocious sapodilla. Not all sapodillas start bearing fruit right away. A lot of them will take up to four years before they start producing at least real, reasonably consistently well. Silas wood trees will start bearing fruit when they're in the pot, um, you know, out of the nursery. So um, they don't get very large, so the fruit this is like uh, a decent size one here, kind of round. This is as big as they're ever going to get. Most of them are going to come out smaller than that. So this tree right now has fruit on it um, from a bloom earlier in the year. And guys like these are ready to pick. Even though it bleeds sap, it's lost a lot of its scurf. It's starting to turn gray and it lost the tip. So even though it's still bleeding, this will actually ripen in less than a week. Yeah, how do you know when to pick a sap? Are they all the same or does it depend on the variety? Well, it, to some extent, it can depend on the variety. Um, one method you can do is scratch them. And if the, the skin color, uh, when you scratch them, is like a real light green or turning yellow, that's a sign that they're about mature and they should ripen. If they're still really dark green, I don't like to pick them. Um, but other cues that you can look for with sapodilla besides the scratch test, because obviously you can't necessarily get up into your tree and scratch all the fruit. Uh, it's not always practical. So uh, some other cues are that they will lose some of that scurf and grit that is on the skin. You know how sapodillas have kind of a sandpapery skin. Uh, that will smooth out. They will go from a kind of a brown color to more of a grayish color is another uh, to look for and then that little tip which well you can zoom in there's that tip right there that will often fall off as a fruit nears maturity so that's another thing to look for with sapodillas now if you harvest one and it doesn't bleed any latex that the white um, liquid that comes out uh, if it if it's totally dry then that's a mature fruit for sure but you can still pick them and they can bleed and they can still ripen okay as long as you've got some other cues. And how long will it take to ripen? Is this is going to ripen in less than a week on our, in our in uh, less than a week, okay. storage room. So, how long yeah. has this tree been in the ground? You know, I think this was probably planted in 2017 or 18. I can't remember, uh, but I think it was 2018. It's been, you know, in the ground for at least several years. It's probably like a five-year-old tree from the point in time it was grafted. So not too bad for a tree that age in terms of its size. We've pruned it a really very little, actually. Um, it does have this central leader, which I, if I had been paying closer attention, probably wouldn't have allowed it to grow that way. I don't like that on sapodillas. I like to get their branches to spread out more, but this one's doing okay. It's made a lot of fruit. Uh, it always has multiple crops. So one cool thing about sapodilla is that most or many sapodillas at least will bear multiple crops a year as opposed to just one shot, one season, like with avocados or something like that. So sapodillas can have crops in the winter, in the spring, depending on the variety, in the late summer. So if you stagger them right, you can have sapodilla fruit almost all year long. Um, or at least for most of the year, and that's kind of cool. So, Is the season different for variety? Yeah, um, so they don't all have the same season. Uh, some of them have their primary season in the winter, like right now, so like December, January, February, uh, for certain varieties like um, Hashia and some of the other ones. Um, Alano uh, usually has its main crop. Um, now, people's individual trees might behave differently. You might have examples of these where, like, they actually produce more fruit in their summer or fall crop. But uh, And then there's certain sapodillas that their main crop comes in spring, like our Martin uh, and Thomas sapodilla. Uh, Moliche is kind of a um, 
a spring sapodilla. So um, Tikal also is, is kind of like more of a March or, la or later sometimes sapodilla with at least most of its crop. So definitely uh, different seasons with them. And you can really have a really long season by planting just a couple varieties with these. So the other varieties that are different than the other, are th but they're all within the same season, each one of those. It's not like one's this month, one's that month. It's all either summer or winter pretty much. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I would say most of those will, or all of those will have two crops. So they'll have their, let's say their winter crop and then they'll have like a summer crop. Um, and then maybe the, some of the other varieties will have a spring crop and like a fall crop. So you can see how you could kind of stretch that out. Uh, but like some of them are going to have nearly identical seasons. So um, like a lot of times Hasha and Milano have pretty close mimicking seasons. So sure. just so what were example. you saying now about the center branch? You would have took that out? Yeah. Um, saps have, sapodillas have a tendency to kind of develop a central leader if you don't prune them uh, the right way. And so, um, so really, uh, you know, if you if you prune them right, you want to get them to kind of spread outward rather than get that Christmas tree shape that the young ones tend to develop. And eventually, they kind of outgrow that shape um, and canopy, and and they kind of develop a little more as they get bigger. But I find that the fruit production is a little better uh, on trees that have been trained. From so a after this age. is fruiting, would you cut the middle one out here? Maybe, yeah, I might cut that back a little bit. It is starting to branch out here. You can see it actually this did get cut. I'm sorry, it got cut back up here pretty recently to kind of discourage that central So if leader. it wasn't branching out up there, how far would you cut it back? Oh, I might cut it back down here. Okay. You can see it's branching real nice down here. I like these low branches. I mean, I don't have to get into a ladder to pick the fruit, obviously. Um, so the, the fruit does kind of weigh the branches down on its own a little bit, so the fruit has trained the tree a little bit. I now I notice you have it next to some of your mango trees. Do you water this any different on a schedule than your mango trees, or it's pretty much the same? Yeah, um, so sapodillas don't require that much water, so we can have them on the same kind of schedule as our mangoes. Um, and uh, they're not too nutritionally demanding either, so uh, these are on the same schedule as the mangoes, I believe, uh, on this row. How so, many sapodilla trees do you have here? That's a good question. I think we have like a dozen varieties of them and then probably like 20 trees, but I, I need to go and count. So um, we have a few in different parts of the property. What's your most popular one? Uh, probably the Thomas amongst people who've tried the saps that we grow. Um, that one's exceptional. Uh, in terms of what people ask us about, like for trees, which we don't have at this time, but maybe in the future will, um, butterscotch, uh, which the Zill Nursery promoted a little bit, uh, has gotten a lot of attention and in terms of sapodillas that people request by name. I probably hear that one more than any other. Now, was that a, a seedling at one point that they propagated or was it a graft? A yeah, I think ago? Gary got that from Costa Rica. And it's a pretty good size fruit. I don't know how good of a producer the tree is. I think they've only got one producing tree at the nursery, but I've had some of those that were like that size, which for a sapodilla, that's a good size fruit. And a very good quality sapodilla. I mean, it's worthy of the hype. So it just kind of remains to see how it's gonna perform here in Florida. But we have one planted, um, not in the best spot, unfortunately. So I kind of wish it was in a, in a sunnier location um, but we'll see how that does in the long run once it gets a little bigger so wonderful wonderful well thank you for showing us this and uh, if anyone has any questions post them below the videos and uh, this tree uh, how much taller will it get or will you let it get well we can allow this tree eventually if, if we if, if we're not so aggressive with the pruning and everything to get maybe uh, 12 feet tall or something like that, but we don't need to let it get quite that big. It's going to be a really productive tree and make more fruit than we know what to do with probably even under 10 feet in height. Right now, obviously, it's well under that. So it's going now, to take a while to get that You say some big. mango trees, if they, if they, you prune them back, they lose production. If you left something like this at this side, would it lose production or this? Uh, this I think you can, you can probably realistically keep this under eight feet 
with pruning, you know, with this kind of spreading habit and it will remain productive. I can't say that for all sapodillas. Some of them are going to fight being kept at that size and they're maybe not going to be as fruitful as a consequence of it. Uh, and that's true for other fruit trees too, not just sapodillas. I mean, that's true with mangoes. Like if you take a mango tree that wants to get big and try to keep it small indefinitely, at some point it's just going to stop trying to flower and it's just going to flush vegetative growth to get its canopy to the size that it wants. And how wants do you know to. that? Did you do that yourself or did you just hear about that? No, that's something I've learned and observed. I mean, okay. um, you can kind of tell by how aggressively something wants to grow and when you cut it back, does it respond with, with a lot of vegetation without much bloom or does it respond with, you know, as much flowers as you would expect to see from that tree from what you've already witnessed. And so I've seen, have had varieties of, of trees where like, you know, you cut it, you give it a decent prune and, and they don't flower very much uh, after you do that to them. So you, you should basically prune almost all fruit trees with some rare exceptions. Um, but you have to know how and uh, you know, what height you can actually reasonably expect to get fruit from them while still you know, cutting them what you have to to keep them at that height. Sure, so if you start cutting them at a certain height, at first they'll be okay, but you're talking about many years down the road they won't or? Something? Yeah, okay. yeah, um, you know, we're talking about like five or six. Or well, at that point, can you let them grow at that point and then they'll be fine or have you already Yeah, I mean, them? like most, most of the time with a vigorous variety, if you've maybe been over pruning it and you want it to become productive again, then after a few growth cycles, and it might take a season or two or a year or two for it to, to relax or to calm down, um, then it can start to become fruitful again. But you would, initially, the tree's response to being over pruned, um, and over prune is something that's going to depend on the variety, okay? Um, this is not something that applies to one, fit, one size fits all, you know, it's not that way. But um, initially in response to that over pruning, they're going to try to uh, flush growth, recover that canopy that they feel comfortable at, if you will. Um, so uh, that can take a couple of years. Sure. All right. And uh, another great thing about this uh, sabadilla tree is they don't all ripen at the same time. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to eat all my fruit at one time. They all ripen at different times, correct? Yeah, you can see, yeah, they don't all ripen at once. So they've got a fairly extended season. You can see the smaller developing fruits here as well as flowers. So it's got little fruits from its next crop here. And then it's also got flowers that are either still setting fruit or have just recently set fruits and very small sapodillas uh, that are on the tree that will be ready presumably sometime uh, in the second half of the coming year. Uh, so it's, they're cool trees. One of the things I love about them, they're not too prone to uh, diseases uh, or, or fungi or, or pests. So they're relatively carefree trees and uh, they're not super demanding when it comes to nutrition. They are native to the Yucatan region of Mexico and the soil that they grow in over there, the native soil is, is not of the best quality for a lot of other fruit trees, but um, these can, can tolerate quite a range of soil types, and that's why they're found throughout the tropical world, um, all over the place. So. Yeah. What family are they of? Fruit? What, what they're are they? in the uh, Sapotaceae family of flowering plants, so that includes things like mame, sapote, canistel, green sapote, um, are members of that family, abu is, is in that family. Uh, how closely, I mean, they, they you can see a physical resemblance between them and Mame, but they're definitely very different trees, um, both in terms of how they bear their fruit and what their leaves look like and stuff like that. But they are in that family of plants. So. And you said some of these dwarf varieties, uh, there's two you said, they can actually be uh, do somewhat well in, in containers. Yeah, I've seen sapodilla trees fruiting in pots. Uh, and uh, because, like I mentioned, they're not as nutritionally demanding as some other fruit trees, um, they can be successfully fruited in a container. It's just that certain kinds of sapodillas are going to probably outgrow the container um, a little too rapidly. Uh, Maycock and Silas Wood, or if you're going to try to grow a sapodilla in a container, are great choices because they're just naturally kind of small, bushier sapodillas. Right. So. 
thank you very much for showing us here today and I'm going to put your contact information below the video. If anyone wants to get a sapodilla tree, uh, Alex has them for sale here at the farm. I'll put the link below the video. Actually, I don't. No, oh, you don't? <laughs> no, we don't have any sapodillas at this time. Sometimes we can obtain them in the nursery trade. In the future, we will be grafting them, but we haven't planted enough sapodilla rootstock yet to be doing that. But our plans are... Right, I'll, our, you, I'll say, uh, So, uh, do you uh, have the sapodilla trees for sale? We don't have any sapodilla trees for sale at this time. We do anticipate in the future that we will, but we will have to plant more sapodilla rootstock, which is something we haven't made an effort for in the past. Right now, we're starting to keep our sapodilla fruit instead of selling it, plant the seeds out um, so that we can get rootstock that we can graft with. So we would like to be able to do um, grafting with sapodilla. Uh, we've certainly got lots of varieties to offer people. Um, I want to say like around 12 or something like that. I haven't counted in a while, but so we can offer a wide variety of them. It's going to take some time. Before but traditionally, you have been selling the fruit, right? Yeah, we've yeah. traditionally sold our sapodilla fruit, um, and normally we would be right now with, with stuff like this, but uh, we need the seeds. So uh, for now, we're going to keep the seeds, and once we've got enough rootstock planted or we feel we have enough, then we'll start selling the fruit again. So. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, everybody, put your comments or questions below. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Everybody, here are some of his other trees. His other, some of them are sapodillas. I want to show you, there's an Olano that was loaded. So here's a, another one with some smaller fruit. Here's another one. Said these fruit aren't ready yet, that's why they're smaller. And he has a bunch of different varieties. Another one. And then he has a really big one. And that's another variety. And then look at that, look how big they get. That's a really big one. And it's loaded with fruit as well. Wow. It's really nice. All right, so you see the different sizes here. If you don't prune it, eventually it'll get like that, but that's a very old tree. All right, everybody, the link's below the video. Check it out. Thanks. All right, everybody, there it is. That is our sapodilla, and uh, that's uh, Alex at Tropical Acres Farm. I'll put his link below the video talking about these. Amazing fruits. Uh, they taste amazing, amazing. and But they're more like snacks than meals, because even though they are filling, they don't ripen at the same time. That's my opinion about them, but they're, they're a wonderful snack and very filling, delicious, nutritious. Get a tree if you have the room. Have a great day, everybody, and keep growing.